Okay, you can uh, don't take your seats. I'm going to pray and we're going to worship Jesus together. It's uh, Father's Day. Welcome to those that are online, those that will be watching us now, those that will be watching us throughout this week. We've had people watching from Canada, from Pakistan. We are welcome. If you're from another nation, we just put a comment in there and just uh, let us know that you're watching the house of God here on the top of this hill where we're believing for a move of God. Okay, this week we are going to pray. Amen. We are praying, church. So tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday afternoon, and next Sunday morning early, we are praying together. It's on Facebook. Just get it into your diary. Make some opportunity to come and pray. We are believing God for a move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's pray. We welcome our brother David from International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. Give him a round of applause. Welcome. Dear brother. Preached some incredible truth yesterday. I wasn't here yesterday afternoon, but it was fantastic. But yesterday morning, just lifting up the name of Jesus. Jesus is our message. That's our core value in this church, isn't it? Jesus is our message. Hallelujah. People are our heart, but first of all, Jesus is our message. So, Father, as we gather in this place today to worship you, I pray that you would release the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Set families free. Set people free. Where, where it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. And who the Son sets free, we all declare, is free Amen. indeed. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Thanks, Steve. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to be back. Seems like only yesterday. We left the thunderstorms of Italy behind us. And uh, they've travelled over here now. So there you go. But uh, no, it's great to, uh, to be back amongst you. And I know that God's been continuing to minister and to bless while we've uh, while we've been away. But uh, God is so good. Amen. Amen. Let me just encourage you with a call to worship this morning from the Psalms. Psalm 16, a psalm of David. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Isn't that true? He's everything to us, isn't he, this morning? That's our testimony in this place. God is the center of our lives. God is everything. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You fill me with joy. And the Lord is here this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we can expect God to fill us with joy. Amen. We can expect God to, to just to turn up. Amen. And to just minister to us and to bless us. Bless the Lord. He's good. For his mercy endures to forever. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's sing this wonderful song together this morning.
thanks to the Lord for his good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks and praise this morning. Hallelujah. With that new tongue that the Lord has given to you. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Our Lord, our Messiah, our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For you are awesome. You are awesome, Lord. You are an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just bless your holy name. says if he's lifted up it will draw all men unto him some of you got problems in your family today let's lift up the name of Jesus some of you are facing problems problems at work next week let's lift up the name of Jesus you know what the consultant has told Lorraine she's got a pre-op we're going to lift up the name of Jesus we've been praying for a long time for a breakthrough and God is going to do some powerful stuff among us amen hallelujah awesome God you are holy Whatever you stand in need of today, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift him up. Let's use his name. Jesus, we love you this morning. Jesus, we love you this morning. Jesus, we love you this morning. You are holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory.
breath will praise you. Let's praise his name. Every breath will praise you. 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 Nothing of ourselves, but because of Him alone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing of ourselves, but through His grace alone. that lost coin. These are the things that Jesus told us. Lost. Helpless. Yet he came and found you. He knew you. And he found you. And now he has brought you into his family. He has restored you. We are no longer sinners, but we are sinners saved by grace. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, what a wonderful truth. We are His. And He holds you with those nail pierced hands tightly. Never to let you go. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. We said it yesterday at our conference for that chesed, that loving kindness that He has put upon us and He has promised that one day we will be with you. What a hope. What a blessed assurance we have. And it's all because of Jesus. And that's why we preach that message. We don't preach any other message. We preach Jesus. Hallelujah. All my life, 
you have been faithful. All my life, you've been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, we will sing of the goodness of God.
you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's declare one last It's hot in here, isn't it? Would you like to take your sisters for a moment? I'm going to ask Lydia to sing that through for us. It's great to have her back from Italy, isn't it? Lydia's in the house. Okay. I'm going to ask you to sing it. As as you do, there's an old song that says, Count your blessings. Let's just reflect over the days that we have lived our lives and say, God, you have been faithful. Sometimes it looked like a bit of a mess. Sometimes it looked like a bit of a car crash. But you know what? God has been working all things together conspiring for our good because we're those that love him and we're called according to his purpose aren't we so Lydia can you sing that for us and then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together on this Father's Day our Father art in heaven but let's just hear the words thanks Lydia I love you Lord oh, your mercy never fails me been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful So some needs in the house this morning we were going to be praying all week but I just want to acknowledge that Julie lost her brother this week and we are praying for you Julie that something of the presence of God will fill your family we pray for those who are sick today that God would meet us but can we just stand and say the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray on this Father's Day he didn't say we can call him God Almighty he said when you pray you can say Our Father, are we ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever 
Amen. Take your seats, would you? Guys, thank you. We're going to uh, listen to God's word. It's uh, my honor and privilege to ask David to come and open the Bible with us this morning and share something of the good news of the gospel. Um, I didn't tell you this yesterday, David, but this hill that you're on top of now is higher than Mount Carmel, okay? <laughs> We're ready for the fire, aren't we, in this place? Amen. So, uh, let, so uh, if you're feeling hot and flushy and it's not you're going through the menopause or anything, you know what I'm saying? It's just hot. And uh, we're believing God. So let's give him a round of applause as he comes. Thank you, David. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Steve. It's good to be here in the Midlands at Sedgley Community Church. And I bring greetings from Jerusalem. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here with you. We had a wonderful conference yesterday. Uh, with my colleague and very good friend, uh, Dr. David Elms. He's a Liverpudnian. <laughs> so, cheers. Yeah, come, come. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his dear wife, Gwen. And uh, um, I always uh, enjoy coming to minister. Uh, I'm half English, half Irish. <laughs> That explains. My mother's Irish, my father's English. That explains why they fought all the time. <laughs> but this is Father's Day. We're only going to say good things about them. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's first go to Jeremiah 6:16. 6, oh, I understand. Yes. yes. Anyone have the interpretation? <laughs> Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. And then we're going over to Hebrews chapter 8, uh, and we're going to read this uh, passage in the New Testament, which quotes from Jeremiah 31, 31 about the, God, the Lord making a new covenant with Israel, not like uh, the first covenant, but verse 10, Hebrews, 8, uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them, that little baby crying, <laughs> to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more." So now, Pastor, we're going to connect these two scriptures. <laughs> going to be a little fun journey here. But uh, in, you know, you're, we're observing Father's Day today. Uh, it's my first Father's Day message ever. It's quite, you know. <laughs> but uh, um, when I think of uh, my own father, I remember as a, a young boy, I don't think I ever had more confidence in my dad than when we'd be on a long trip. Uh, and, of course, he's driving us there, and you're either in the back seat or in your, you're in the back uh, of the truck with a, um, a canopy on it, a camper on the back, and you're laying there asleep, and he's driving even late into the uh, wee hours of the morning on your way to Florida to Disneyland or whatever as a family, and you just kept rolling over and sleeping and sleeping. The hum of the engine put you to sleep. And you had total trust in your dad being able to get you there safely. And you wake up and you're in Disneyland, you know. <laughs> it's like magical or whatever. But uh, uh, later, as I grew up, I found out that my dad, from a young age, from around uh, uh, sixth grade or so, he started losing his eyesight. <laughs> And uh, by the time he was a, a dad, he was legally blind, but he had big, thick glasses, and he could see and drive. And, you know, I guess from then on, uh, you know, it was faith and not trust. 
<laughs> and ride with him in his truck. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I could give you some stories, but we'll, we'll move on. But I remember, um, you know, as I got older, you know, and you look at your father as a father figure. He was a carpenter, started out as a carpenter, um, and then became a general contractor. And by the end, he was building big, uh, huge sandcastle, six, eight-bedroom beach houses for rich Yankees who would come down to the south on our resort islands and buy homes and stay in these huge homes now. And I, growing up, I would help him build, even from uh, the age of 11. Um, I just, I don't know why. My dad picked me out. I was the second son. My brothers, three brothers, they'd on a Saturday morning, they'd still be in their pajamas watching the cartoons on TV, and I'd have to get up and go to work and help, help him tote shingles to help pay the bills. <laughs> I, you know, I learned to work hard. But as I'd work with him and, and I continued to build houses with him, going through college and law school and stuff, um, and I knew it would never be my full profession, but I learned how to build houses. And I would always, you know, uh, watch him. Back then, we didn't have nail guns like today, but we worked with wood and he could set and uh, spike, drive a nail in two licks. When he really got working and, and motoring and that flick of the wrist, and somehow I, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be, you know, not only two, but maybe one, you know. I, that was my dream. We, um, we have the, this thing. I know a lot of the young folks, because we've had so many uh, superhero movies, Batman and Spider-Man, all oh, they Gosh, when's it going to get old, you know? But uh, um, you go on, the, they go on the talk shows, these actors and all, and the first thing they ask them, you know, if you were really a superhero, what, what, what superhero power would you have? What one would you choose? And uh, I think in those days, I, I would have I had a big, like, hammer on my cape, you know, one lick, boom. <laughs> That would have been my super power. Where, where's our little... Stand up. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. What, what superpower would you want? Um, flying. Flying. Where's the... Uh, I know uh, you were on the base. You know about these movies. What superpower would you have? Uh, strength. Strength. You've probably seen, seen some of them. Come on, Daredevil and all those movies. Come on. Healing. Healing, amen. Maybe a lady. Uh, coffee. <laughs> see, see, the ladies don't think about it. It's a guy thing. I saw you before this service. I picked you out. Strength. Strength. Okay, good. Good. I bet some of it, you know, might be influenced by who your father was. Maybe you want to fly away from him or strength to beat him up. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father's Day. Jeremiah said we should ask, we should seek for the old ways. And we live in a day here on Father's Day where the traditional family unit is breaking down. The old ways are under assault as never before. We're getting to a point where more than half of the children being raised today are being raised in single-parent homes. And God bless especially mothers who are having to do this. But we were sort of built in a special way by God to um, th that it takes a long time for a human to develop into an adult who can take care of themselves. You know, little animals, rabbits are born, and within about eight or ten months, they're having more babies, you know. And it takes us, you know, we think, you know, five, seven, ten. It takes us about 20 years, really, to grow up. It really does. 
We have this thing, one of the things that is breaking down about the traditional family. It's not only the gay marriage, the transgender, whatever. The, the whole thing of abortion, that the old ways, a woman would fall pregnant, and there was a maternal instinct. And this was across all peoples and all cultures. You, you had a duty to make certain sacrifices to make sure this child was born into the world. It was why you were born. No one questioned it. And in this age of, uh, you know, n no uh, reason abortions, uh, you know, maybe we set the limit. Well, you can have abortion up until, uh, uh, you know, before the, the fetus would be viable outside the womb. This is how we put it. Let me ask you something. You take a three-year-old child and you put them by yourself without a mother or father or anyone to take care of them. Are they viable? No. Maybe seven, eight years old, some street urchins can take care of themselves. But we need a mother and a father in our lives to help us grow up, to be responsible adults ourselves and able to have children ourselves. And it's something that should be in our nature and something we preserve, but it's only, it's, it's under attack today. Mothers are needed because at two in the morning, <laughs> that little baby is going to wake up crying for milk. And it's the mother that has that maternal instinct, that mercy trigger and mechanism that says, I got to get up and feed my baby. Believe me, the guy doesn't have it. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get up. We got, you know, milk bottles and everything today, but... Uh, it, the, the, the mother's habit, even when we got a dog recently, my wife didn't want a dog. And I wanted it, my son to grow up with a dog. And once we got it, her mother and instinct kicked in to where that dog doesn't miss a meal and whatever. It's tre treated better than I am. Oh, hallelujah. And you need a father in your life to, at some point, you have to be sort of uh, nudged out of the nest to go make your way in life. But there's a certain tension. I, I, I'm trying to, you know, I see some skills. I see some promise in you and go out there and face life and make something of yourself. But, but I got your back. A father figure who will give you confidence and you can trust that he's always there behind you as you go and try and find your way in life. And this is the way we were made to operate, to uh, have children who grow up healthy. And uh, I don't want to say normal, but I think it's just the proper nurturing that we all need. And the proof is that today there are so many people, the Bible calls it the cry of the fatherless. And if a girl doesn't grow up with a proper father figure, whether it's their real father or a grandfather or some father figure, they are totally vulnerable to all the young boys who come along and want to court them and make them go past lines that they shouldn't. And if you have the proper father figure, it gives the girl enough strength in their inner self and character to say no until they're truly ready for it. And if they don't have it, young girls fall pregnant far more if they don't have that father figure. And it perpetuates that young single mothers uh, create girls with young single who become young single mothers having teen pregnancies and stuff. I want to be gracious. Uh, you know, I don't know everyone here, but I'm just giving a, a lot of this is Jordan Peterson stuff. If you've ever seen him on, on YouTube and all, he's brilliant about, and he's a, he's a saved, he's a believer now. 
But the, the guys who don't grow up with a proper father figure, they wind up, they look for acceptance and confidence and trust in their peers and guys their own age. So they join gangs and stuff and start doing drugs, wind up in jail, whatever. And they're out there hanging out thinking, you know, they're going to learn something from guys their own, a- own age who are fairly lost themselves. And they wind up criminals or in jail or whatever. And it's very rampant. It's a lot of the ills in our societies breaking down. Ask for the old ways. God, give us in this church, in the body of Christ, fathers and mothers raising children like we need. And you know, the Bible is full of stories of, uh, today we call them dysfunctional families or divided divisions in families. Even the book of Genesis, if you were to have a, a weekly show series that, you know, wasn't so spiritual. You just took some of the soap opera people. I mean, it would be pretty risque stuff going on. And full of stories of sibling rivalries and sons looking for acceptance from their father and all sorts of things and moral choices coming along. I mean, you've got uh, Cain and Abel offering sacrifices to to God the Father, wanting acceptance. One was accepted, one wasn't. The one who wasn't accepted kills his brother. You have Abraham, can't fall pregnant. His wife can't fall pregnant. So Sarah says, look, go and have a child with uh, my maidservant, uh, Hagar. And it births Ishmael, but then... The son of promise comes along, Isaac, and you've got a rivalry between them and and this rivalry between Hagar and Sarah. And the Bible is just full of these families that have all these troubles in them. You have Isaac and Ishmael, and sometimes you read these stories how, how the writer of Genesis You know, the one who gets the birthright, you say, oh, praise the Lord, God's working out his salvation plan. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, all the way through Judah and Joseph, and here comes King David and Jesus. We, You know, we think of that, the birthright, yes. But the writer of Genesis also has sympathy for the one who lost the birthright. And it's like these rivalries and not accepted by their father, seeking acceptance by their father, all all through it, wanting their father's attention. You go to uh, Rachel and Leah. I mean, it's uh, the Genesis is full of it. And yet, Romans chapter 11. It says that God's election over Israel stands. That even though they were made enemies of the gospel for our sake, that because they rejected the gospel of Jesus after he rose from the dead, the gospel has now come out to the nations, which was God's plan all along. And even though we sort of get that birthright of salvation, you still have sympathy back to the Jews. And the Bible says, even though they were made enemies of the gospel, their election stand. Why? Because they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. Whatever was happening back there with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and that birthright being passed along and certain sons feeling rejection and whatever, they still walked before the Lord in faith, in a faith that pleased God so much that if you trace this through the Bible, and when it says fathers, it means the patriarchs. They are, God still loves the Jews to this day because of the faith of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Even when they did the golden calf, worship the golden calf, 
God did not, as a father, he did not abandon them. He still had their back. He was still there for them. When they brought back the report of the ten spies that was a bad report, God did not abandon them. When Moses was late in his life, Deuteronomy chapter 4, he's recalling even at Baal of Peor, your error and mistake there of mating with the, the Moabite women and worshiping their gods and a plague came in the camp. God is still with you because he loved your fathers. This is where Paul takes it from in Romans 11. Because he loved your fathers. The, the God who called Abraham never abandoned him. This is the God we serve and can use as a model in our lives. And that, uh, I think my first point here, (laughs) finally reached a point. It is an amazing thought that you and you and you as a father walking with God, even if there's, you know, mistakes, there's problems in the family, whatever, You can leave a legacy before God. So please, God, in your walk, that the fruit and blessing of it is with your children and your children's generation. We're talking hundreds of generations, or hundred generations later, God still loves the Jews because he loved the patriarch Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the way they walked before him by faith. So I want to encourage the fathers here with us, leave a legacy to your children by walking faithful uh, and upright and pleasing to God in your own life. And it can even last long before you're in the grave. That is a reassuring and encouraging message uh, this morning. God the Father created us in his image. When we talk about fatherhood, we need to sort of understand who he is and who we are. And we were talking about it yesterday, this concept of uh, imago dei, that man is created in the image of God. She can say it in Italian, right? (laughs) He knows the Latin. I'm just going to say This concept that man is created in the image of God, one of the aspects, one of the facets of this concept is that if I'm made in the image of God, it means I have a free will just like him. Okay? By definition, if I'm made in his image, he has a free will, so do I. The problem is that if I have a free will and he has a free will, at some point in my life, my will is going to cross his. And this is called sin. And it's inevitable. It just is because we are made in his image. We are given free choices and free will And I don't know, I think some of it is because we are now uh, uh, mortal beings and have this strong survival instinct and we're only looking out for ourselves. We sin against God. And what, uh, what is not being preached in our pulpits uh, enough, the God who made us, he loves us. He loves what he created and man most of all. But we do not really consider that he's a holy God, and he cannot stand sin. That if someone he created crosses his will, there's something in his holy character that lashes out at it. He says, I I, I can't stand it. When Satan arose in pride before the Lord and said, I want the place where Jesus sits. Jesus said, I beheld Satan. Uh, He fell like lightning, right? How fast is lightning? 
tell you, God saw this in front of him. And it was gone. Satan woke up somewhere else down at a lower heaven. (laughs) And it's just in his nature and character. I, I, I can't, I'm just telling you what the Bible says and what we need to know about ourselves and the God we serve. Amen? But God made a way of escape. Amen? He sent his son. He pushed him out of the nest. Said, you've got a destiny. You've got your own destiny to go pursue. I got your back. I'm with you. This is my beloved son. And he sent his son. If you sin, it it comes with consequences. The wages of sin is death, separation from God, eternal damnation. And God made a way because of his love for us. He sent his own son out as a loving father to come and pay the price for our sins. This is the pure, simple gospel. And Jesus dying on the cross satisfied that part of the holy character of God that lashes out at sin. But only for those who call on the name of his son. If he's going to make that sacrifice and send him here, he's the dividing line. John 3. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not believe in the Son does not have life, but the wrath of God abides on him. It sticks to you. Jesus did not come uh, to save us from Satan or hell. He came to save us from the wrath of God. And if you don't call on him, the wrath of God is like a target, a bullseye on you. It's like a tattoo, and you'll never get rid of it. It's what Jesus says. The wrath of God abides on the head of everyone who rejects the Son of God. This is a pure, simple gospel. Oh, but thank God for his great love for us to send his own son, his son. Oh, the love of the father. What a marvel. You know, God, here in the book of Hebrews, it says that I don't have to go to someone and prove God to you. I don't have to come up with all sorts of academic arguments and teleological and ontological and all of the stuff they get into these academic debates about God. It says this is the sign of the new covenant that I won't have to come to you and say, no God. Do, Do you know God? You know God? Why under this new covenant you will come to know me through the forgiveness of your sins. And God could have made it that we would come to know him through his great power, his strength, right? Or that he can or that he can fly. He could have put on some cape with, you know, and pound a nail and you know, just blowing on it. <laughs> he could have sh- anything. God wears a cape that has a big L for love. He has a big cape. His superpower is forgiveness that everyone born into the kingdom of God, you're born into it, and no one uh, has to tell you there is a God. You come to know him when he forgives your sins. How many have experienced that? You've kneeled at the foot of the cross 
And you know God. You know you have a maker. You know he cares for you. You know that Jesus, he said, died for you. And no one can ever talk me out of it. You know why? Oh, if they ever did, I'd have to take my sins back. And I don't want them. I don't want them. I don't want them. If you've never had that experience, you need to come to the altar and find the God of love. It's an amazing thing that God wants a people who first are introduced to him and learn about him as a God of forgiveness. Holy. This is what we don't appreciate and honor and respect about our Father. He's holy. He's perfect. This is what keeps him perfect. You can't have sin around him. But because of his Son, we can approach him because our sins are washed away. And we can know the love of a Father that walks with us through this world encouraging us to find our destiny in him and always has our back and a God of provision, a father who is good, good, good. Amen. Uh, Pastor, uh, if you want to open up the altar here and pray for some people, please come. I don't know if you want to do some music. Come to the Father. His arms, come to the altar. His arms are open wide. Bless you. Hmm. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we can sing, Yet not I but Christ in me. It's all about Jesus. We were praying in the prayer meeting because for some people it's very difficult to understand what a father is like if you've not had a father that's loved you. So my prayer this morning is that if you haven't experienced the love of a father, that in this moment, Jesus will enter into your soul. And you'll know what it is to have one that loves you more than you'll ever know. That when you're down, he picks you up. When you're being stupid, he pushes you on. Because he loves us. We're opening the altar this morning. We're going to sing, Yet Not I But Christ In Me. If you want prayer for anything, if you'd like to give your life to Christ, if you'd like to be prayed for, if you're feeling sick, we're just going to open the altar on this Father's Day and just bless his wonderful name. So let's just uh, worship the Lord together. Amen. Thanks, Steve.
is still open we'll continue to minister to people perhaps Josh will put a bit of music on as we uh, as we go today it is Father's Day I just want to thank uh, you David for coming for this weekend and uh, we found a preacher that wanders around more than I do praise the Lord so I'm not feeling so bad about things now I mean, that's, uh, that's that's done me a favour amen uh, if you're a gentleman here uh, you're a dad you're a would-be dad you're going to be a dad even if you're eight you're going to be a dad sometime we pray in the name of Jesus We've got chocolate for you. And you know what? I found more socks in my garage, boy. So there's tons of socks for everyone. This is just uh, amazing. So please take pairs of socks. Joel can, you, Joel, can you sort them out with Zach? They're just in the front. There's chocolate. There's socks. Just make sure everybody gets one. So, um, uh, Father, in Jesus' name. We'll just pray before we go, and then we'll uh, put some worship music on. Father, we just want to thank you for today. I pray that you'll bless our fathers. We want to be those that stand strong for you in the purposes of God. And I pray now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will rest and remain with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. God bless you.